Hi everyone, this is Matthew Jander for Card Runners, and I'm here with part four of my quickie series where we're analyzing how to defend different opening ranges in the button to three bets from the blinds. So in the last video, we talked about how to defend with this 16.7% flatting range. We talked about how we might defend with a range like this against three bets if the blinds were three betting against a 40% button opening range. And we're going to go ahead and jump right in and not waste any more time because we want to get through a lot of flops today. All right, so let's randomly generate our first flop. Okay, queen, four, four, rainbow. So this is a flop which is not going to hit us with a particularly lot of pairs. Luckily, the board was queen high, which tends to hit us better than any other flop other than maybe ace high. But it's still going to be quite a stretch to defend this many combos because we have such few very strong hands. So we have 201 combos total. We're going to multiply that by 0.7, and that gives us 141 combos. All right, so this is a board where I think it's pretty clear we wouldn't want to value raise anything. We can already get all the money in by calling the flop and betting the turn in the river if our opponent checks to us, and there's not really any cards we're afraid of letting our opponent see with our very strong hand, like ace, queen, and king, queen. It's not very often they're going to be outdrawn on the turn, so we don't need to value raise anything, and of course we won't bluff raise anything. So now we just need to work on calling with our 140 combos. All right, so let's get all of our pairs in first. So weak pair. I think this is a board texture where it's pretty reasonable to think we'll defend with any pairs, so I'm going to go ahead and write WP for weak pair plus, and then 81 hand combos. All right, so now we have 61 combos, or 60 combos that we have to defend with that don't even have a pair. Once again, really let that sink in for trying to get used to how wide you need to defend here. We have to defend with 60 combos where we don't even have a pair. So... It's really starting to thing like, seem like these are almost like heads-up ranges that we're having to defend a lot of the time. And in heads-up, you know, you often don't flop a pair, and you have to continue against your opponent's bet. So, all right, so let's go ahead and start adding in hands. So we can add an ace-jack, that will be 16. We can add in ace-10, that will be another 16. We can add in... Um, and then I would, from here, start adding in, like, all the backdoor stuff. Ace-9 suited, that's going to be three hand combos. Ace-8 suited, that's going to be three hand combos. Once again, we're just calling with all the ones that have backdoor flush draws at first. All right. So that's going to give us 81 plus 16, that's going to give us 97. 97 plus 16, that's going to give us 113. 113 plus 6, that gives us 119 plus 100. All right, so this is going to be 128, I believe. I'll double check in a moment, and we only have 13 more to go. So this board was kind of easy to bang out really quickly because there's just not that many, um, you know, it's just relatively easy to see you want to call with most ace high in most of your pairs. So I'm adding in stuff like king jack suited, king ten suited. This stuff can all turn, you know, sort of runner, runner straight, runner, runner flush. Um, probably jack ten suited and king nine suited or so seems reasonable. That gives us 12 more combos. So that will give us to 140, which is close enough. So we figured this one out incredibly quickly. And now if I see a flop like queen 4 2 I'll pretty much know how to play it if I defend it, you know, this 16.7% flatting range and I open the button 40% of the time. But what I would do if I were, you know, after I did a flop like this, one of the things that would pop into my head would be like, okay, how does this change if the board's jack high? So right now we have pocket pair below top pair is... 40.3%, top pair is 22.4. How's that change if it's jack high? Doesn't look like it changes almost at all. How's it change if it's king high? Now it goes down quite a bit. So if you do randomly generate a flop or if you are trying to improve, when you do get a board texture like this, it kind of helps to you know move this high card around and see how things change so you have a really good idea of what you need to do in the future. So it looks like, not surprisingly, we missed the king high boards really hard. So you know what? I'm actually not going to randomly generate a board. I'm going to do this one with king high. And I'm going to see how we'd have to defend it if we wanted to call enough on a king high flop. So there's our flop. Total combos is going to be 205 times 0.7. That's going to give us 143. I'm going to round down. Desired combo, oh, 143, 205. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and you know see how fast we can do this. Weak pair plus is going to be only 69 here. So call WP plus 
is going to be 69 hand combos. And rather than write them all out again, you can sort of just see since we have 12 less top pair hands, we're probably going to have to call with, you know, 12 more hand combos than this. Let's look. Um, so, you know, obviously some of the hands I'm moving over right now have a pair of kings, so we're going to take that out. But it would be something like we get rid of this. And I'm going to pause for a second to see how much that is. So I just went ahead and quickly added in what I think would be our whole calling range here so we can move on. And it gave us 141 combos, so I'm two combos short, so you could add two more combos if you wanted. But for the most part, I added in 16 ace-queen, so now we have 48 sort of high-card off-suited hands, whereas before we had 32. And I realize some of these are going to be suited, but most aren't. So we had to call significantly wider on a king high board. So when you are sort of working on your own ranges and figuring out how to defend certain board textures, if you are randomly generating them, don't be afraid to stop randomly generating them and make a board texture which is going to, you know, help you connect the flop or the turn or the river you just sort of figured out. So when I'm making these videos, I'm actually still trying to learn and I kind of wanted to do this. So I just figured out, hey, why not? I'll put it in the video. But yeah, I was curious to see how I would have to defend on a king high board compared to queen high. And it looks like we'd have to defend, you know, significantly wider, but nothing um, too ridiculous here. We just have to float quite a bit with ace high hands and hope to get to showdown with them. All right, random time. That one's interesting. We haven't had a flop like that yet. And I'm going to be very curious to see how to defend on this. So 8 of clubs, 8 of spades, 9 of spades, that's a total combo of 198, so that's a little bit less than before, which is suggesting we did make some pairs and such. Desired combos defended, 198 times 0.7 is going to give us 139. All right, so let's go ahead and get defending. Value raising here, once again, I don't think that we have any hands here that are going to need a value raise. We can pretty much slow play all of our eights. No real reason to value raise anything here. We can get all the money in quite easily. So value raise, zero. Bluff raise, zero. All right, let's get that calling range going. So we have weak pair or better is going to be 62 combos. And I think we would probably call with all of our weak pairs here. We maybe could find a fold with fives or fours if we had, you know, a lot of strong hands are going to be able to bet the turn in the river so we can bluff with most of our hands that miss so we don't need to call with like a weak hand like fives or fours but for the most part I don't think that's going to be possible so I'm at least going to put them in for now so call weak pair plus which is going to give us 60 where are you 62 hand combos and then I'm also going to put in the flush draws which should give us another I don't think any of these can be double counted no so that'll give us another 16 combos all right so we still got quite a ways to go, so let's see what else we can do. We can start off with defending most of our high card type hands and straight draws. So let's go ahead and get in all the straight draws. All right, so we got Jack-10 suited, 7-6 suited. Jack-10 suited, 7-6 suited. That gives us another 8 or 6 combos. Sorry, we don't want to double count. Then it also looks like for gut shots, we'll have quite a few. So gut shots, yeah, that's a lot. Um, gut shots is going to be... Gut shot's going to be, without trying to double count, so that's going to be minus 4, so 28 minus 4, since we don't want to count the flush draw, so that's 24 more gut shots. A lot of gut shots here. One thing you should always be paying attention to, whether it's a raised or 3-bet pot, is does my opponent have offsuit hand combos, which bring straights, or uh, have opened into straight draws, or gut shots? So if the flop comes something like, you know, jack, 10, 9, and you're in a raised pot, you really need to think, my opponent usually has 16 combos of king-queen there. That is a ridiculous number of combos. And if he bets all three streets, by the time you get to the river, a large, large, large portion, if not the majority of his range, will often be king-queen. So really think about, you know, does my opponent have offsuit combos here or not when you're looking at draws? Because if he does, he's going to have four times as many. It's a really big deal. Okay, so let's go ahead and total this up real quick. So we've got um, 30 right here, plus 16, that's 46. 46 plus 62, that is 108. All right, so we've got 31 more to go, which seems like it's going to be very doable. So I'm pretty pleased with how this is working out so far. So let's go ahead and do all the ace-queen combos, I think. That'll give us 15 more, not wanting to double count the flush draw. Then let's do ace of spades, jack x, ace x, jack of spades. Then let's do king of spades, jack x, ace of spades, 10x. And then um, we need to also do the backdoor flush draws here. So we'll also do ace, jack, club, club. And then, you know, King Jack, Club Club, and then Ace 10 Club Club. So let's count that one up. Okay, and then that gave us, got us to 138 combos. So this board texture was actually a lot easier to defend than I would have expected. So once again, if you are randomly generating flops, the next thing you might want to do is go, huh, 
well, if that's 889, how would that change if I wanted to defend this? Or how would it change if I wanted to defend this? You know, make it so you can really remember how to play on these types of boards rather than just doing a bunch of flops that, you know, aren't really related to one another. All right, time to randomly generate. 882. That's actually kind of cool that we got that flop randomly because it is a little similar to the last one. 882 total combos is going to be 207, so that's a lot of combos. This board's obviously going to be harder to defend than the last one since we're not going to have as many pairs that make it kind of easy. So 145 combos we need to defend out of 207. All right, so let's figure out what we're value raising. Once again, nothing. That's pretty typical. All right, so middle pair or better, all, all of our pairs are only 22.7%, so that is 47 hand combos. That means we are floating a lot here with ace-high hands, or you might not even want to call it a float. You're calling with ace-high hands. Those hands can definitely be the best hand in one at showdown. The whole definition of a float is a whole other thing. I would pretty much just call them calls. I, I use the term float too much because other people do. We're calling with mostly ace-high hands. Let's see what else we got. All right, so we got a bunch of ace-high hands there. Um, all right, so we're not going to call with all of our ace-high hands, but we're probably going to call with most of them. So let me think for a moment if there's a quicker way to write this. I believe there is, so I'm going to try to do that right now. Okay, so for ace-high, we have 68 combos total. But some of those we're going to count as flush draws in a moment, and some ace-high we're not going to want to call with. Like, we probably don't want to call with ace-nine or worse. That doesn't at least have the backdoor flush draw. So that means when we are counting ace-high, we're going to count... 16 for ace queen, ace jack, ace 10, so that's 48. Then each of the other ones will count as one. So 48, and then ace 9 suited makes 49. Ace 7 suited makes 50. And then ace 5, ace 4, ace 3, and make 53 combo. So I'm going to put ace high 53. And once again, we haven't count the, counted the flush draw. That gives us 100 combos total. We haven't counted the flush draws yet, which we're going to do right now. So flush draws is going to be another 22 combos. That's quite a lot. So flush draws is 22. So we're already at 122 combos, which is really nice. It's not going to be as hard to defend this board as I thought. So let's go ahead and go king, queen, seven. By that, I mean every king, queen with a runner, runner, flush draw. We can do the same thing for king, jack, seven. Anything else I'm missing? So that's going to be get us to 136. So we're already very close. We need nine more hand combos. So king, jack, or king, 10, spade, spade, king, nine, spade, spade, queen, jack, or, you know, we can even just do queen jack seven. That'll also get the job done. If you wanted to, you wouldn't need to do queen jack seven. You could add in some of the, you know, king tennis uh, spades or the king nine of spades. But for all practical purposes, this does what we want. So let me just double check that this adds up. 100 plus 22 plus 21. So we are two hand combos short. So sure, we'll do king 10 spade spade and king nine spade spade, which should get us to our 145 hand combos. So this board wasn't as hard to defend as I would have thought. So that's something to keep in mind that this is a very reasonable board to float. So if you are the three better against someone who called your flop bet, you might think, hey, he has a lot of these, you know, really weak hands on the turn. And people probably aren't going to float, you know, two streets as often as they'll float one. So maybe you can blast them off on the turn. Likewise, you know here, since your range is weak, if you are flatting against a three better, you're probably going to have to call at least, you know, a couple streets with a hand like ace queen or ace jack. That's a marginal strength hand on a board like this, so don't be afraid to call more than one street. So just take notes of stuff as you're doing this so you really it really sinks in so you can apply it. So we're at the end of the video. So what I wanted to do was quickly randomly generate some flops, talk about them for a moment without writing down all the hand combos, and then we'll wrap up the video. So I just randomly generated this flop, but I stuttered a bunch, so I deleted that recording, and I do want to talk about this specific flop, though. What I said, which made me stutter, was this is a board texture where when you're calling on the flop, since you're not going to have enough pairs here to call with, you know, just pairs all the time, you're going to have to call with a lot of hands here, which seem like they can't really improve and they're not very strong. So you're going to have to call with hands like king jack with the back for flush draw, king 10, maybe king 9, queen jack, queen 10, jack 10, all those sort of hand types of hands with the back for flush draws might need to be called, even though it's very, very unlikely they'll outdraw on your opponent. 
Likewise, when you are calling your opponent's bluff with your ace high hand, it's very, very, un un it's very, very unlikely for your opponent to outdraw you. So keep that in mind that just because this is a board texture where weak hands are less likely to outdraw your opponent doesn't mean you're going to have to flat the flop with significantly less weak hands. You still can't fold to 50% of your opponent's flop bets here, especially since you're in position and you have a whole ton of aces. So be willing to call here with hands you might not expect. Let's keep going. Jack, eight, five of clubs. So my guess is this would be a board texture that would be very easy to defend since it's so hard for a hand to not have some sort of gut shot or flush draw or open in the straight draw here. Always want to pay attention to boards when they only have, you know, two or three cards, you know, between each other. You can have a lot of straight draws and flush draws. So this one's a great example of pretty much any sort of gapper or literally any sort of gapper or pseudo connector we have would either have a pair or a straight draw. Um, the exception being, I guess, ace queen wouldn't. Maybe there's one more I'm not seeing right now. But for the most part, this is a board texture that's very, very easy to defend on. So if you are the three better, you probably want to bet a little bit less here, unless your, you know, air has pretty good equity. And if you are calling here, you probably don't want to call with a weak hand unless it has a reasonable chance to improve. So it's the complete opposite of the last hand. Whereas the last hand, you're going to have to force yourself to call enough hands, even though these hands suck. Whereas on this board, you're going to only be able to call with hands that have a reasonable chance to improve because so much of your range has some equity even against your opponent's pretty strong hands. So this is a much easier board to defend where you want to be a little bit pickier with the hands that make up the bottom of your calling range. So we are now at the end of this quickie. Please tell me in the forums if you think I talked too fast. I talk relatively quickly in general and usually try to slow it down, but for quickies, it's hard to go over a lot of material quickly if I talk slowly. So please let me know if you think I talked too quickly or if this is a pace that you thought was reasonable so we could get a lot of information down in a very limited time frame. So thanks again for watching. I look forward to reading your comments in the forums and just please let me know what you thought about the pacing of my speaking. Good luck, everyone. Bye. Want to see your hands in the quickie? Convert your hand history using the CR Converter or post it in the forums. Send your link or questions to thequickie at cardrunners.com. Please include all relevant reads, stats, and information. The more info you provide, the more likely you'll be selected.